NICN Level 6 MVQ Diploma in Construction Site Management, Construction, for the Black Sea SCS card. The following video presentation will help you to understand how your MVQ works and how you can achieve a successful outcome. The NVQ is an evidence-based qualification. You must demonstrate attributable evidence to support the claim that you are a competent site manager. The NVQ is made up of 20 units and you'll need a wide range of evidence to cover them all. Types of evidence. Photos. Video evidence. Documents. Knowledge questions. Professional discussion. Workplace observation. Let's look at the evidence in more detail. Photos and videos. We'll take photographs and videos during our site visit. If your site has restrictions on this, please let us know beforehand so an alternative method of collection can be established. You can use your own photos and videos, but you must be in them, or they must be attributable in some way. Documents. There are lots of documents that you can use as work-based evidence. Risk assessments. Method statements. Meeting minutes. Emails. Permits. Toolbox talks. Materials request forms or emails. Non-conformance reports. Early warnings. Construction phase plans. Company-specific documents. Work-based evidence must be current, preferably from the last six months or collected going forward. Attributable. It must have your name on it or be linked to you in some way. Email trails are great evidence, whereas a blank template would not be usable evidence. Knowledge questions. There are lots of knowledge questions to answer. You must give answers that are unique to you. Try to answer the questions, then back them up with an example associated with your work. This is your opportunity to showcase your knowledge in your work. Pay close attention to the command word at the start of the question, as it will indicate the level of detail required in your response. Try to avoid lists and single sentence answers, we're looking for detailed responses. Professional discussion. This evidence will be captured by discussing your work with your assessor whilst being recorded. The assessor may ask you to elaborate in certain areas to ensure a full and depth answer has been given. You may choose to answer your knowledge questions this way if you have time constraints or have problems with reading or writing. Observation. This will be carried out in your workplace. Our assessor will observe you doing your day-to-day -day role. He'll be looking at how you do your job, how you interact with the rest of the workforce, and ensuring that you are a competent site manager. Evidence index. You'll need to collect the evidence and store it in an evidence index. We prefer to use electronic evidence, such as scans, portable document formats, and Word documents, but if you have hard copies of evidence, we can do this for you. Let's take a look at how you can achieve one of the units. Unit 1. Developing and maintaining good occupational working relationships in the workplace. 1.1. Give appropriate advice and information to relevant people about the occupational work activities and or associated occupations involved. This can be achieved by using any of the following evidence. Daily briefings, emails, technical queries, meeting minutes, workplace observations. 1.2. Apply the principles of equality and diversity by considering the needs of individuals when working and communicating with others. You can achieve this by treating your colleagues and others with respect during the site visit and explaining the equality policy to your assessor during a site induction. A video of you explaining the equality and diversity policy during an induction would also be sufficient. 1.3. Explain the methods and techniques used and personal attributes required to encourage and maintain working relationships that promote goodwill and trust with relevant people. 1.3 is a knowledge question and the command word explain indicates that you should provide substantial detail when answering this question. Try to talk about how you personally promote this in the workplace rather than rely on company policies and procedures. 1.4 explain the principles of equality and diversity and how to apply them when working and communicating with others. 1.4 is a knowledge question, and the command word explain indicates that you should provide substantial detail when answering this question. For this question you should talk about equality, diversity, and the protected characteristics under the Equality Act. 
Try to back it up with an example of how you personally implement this in the workplace. 2.3. Communicate on the following work activity information to relevant people following organizational procedures. Appropriate timescales. Health and safety requirements. Coordination of work procedures. WBE that would meet the criteria for this would include lookaheads, programs, program meeting minutes, RAMS briefings, safety audits, toolbox talks, construction phase plan, etc. 2.2. Explain the different methods and techniques used to inform relevant people about work activities. 2.2. Is a knowledge question, and the command word explain indicates that you should provide substantial detail when answering this question. In your response to this question, you should provide a detailed account of how you personally inform people about work activities. Try to discuss a range of people at different levels within the organization. 2.3. Explain the effects of not informing relevant people with the expected level of urgency. For this question, you should talk about the repercussions, both in financial and safety terms, of not conveying information to those who require it in a timely manner. 3.1. Give appropriate advice and information to relevant people about the different methods of carrying out occupational work activities to achieve the required outcome. WBE that could be used to meet assessment criteria include method statements, permits to work, RAMS reviews, toolbox talks. 3.2. Explain the techniques of encouraging questions and or requests for clarification and comments. For this question, you should talk about how you personally confirm information has been received and encourage two-way dialogue. 3.3. Explain the different ways of offering advice and help to different people about work activities in relation to progress, results, achievements, occupational problems, occupational opportunities, health and safety requirements, coordinated work. For this question, you should respond to each point individually, backing the responses up with examples associated with your own work and how you contribute to the processes. 4.1. Engage regular discussions with relevant people about the occupational work activity and or other occupations involved. WBE that would cover this learning outcome would include emails, toolbox talks documented or video footage, RAMS briefings, meeting minutes, daily briefs. 4.2. Explain the methods of clarifying alternative proposals with relevant people. For this question, you should talk about the process you follow if you want to make a proposal for a change to the working method. Try to back this up with an example. 5.1. Examine and agree the work activities that satisfy all people involved and will meet the required outcome of the proposed method of work, WBE, that would cover this learning outcome, would include emails, program meeting minutes, supervisor meeting minutes, observations, RAMS appraisals. 5.2. Explain the methods and techniques used to resolve differences of opinion in ways which minimize offense and maintain goodwill, trust and respect. For this question, you should discuss how differences on site can be resolved in a positive fashion. Try to back this up with a real work example that you have been involved in. We hope that you have found the information in this video helpful. If you would like further advice on how you can achieve your NVQ Level 6, please get in touch. JTW Construction Training. Learn today, build tomorrow.